Good morning. My name is Rhiannon and I'm the Assistant Director of the Application Receipt Team within the GMP Clearance Section of the Manufacturing Quality Branch. I commenced with the TGA in August last year and I have more than 11 years experience working in government regulation of manufacturing sites with good manufacturing practices. Today's webinar is the first in a series of three. The following two will focus on submitting an effective application and common pitfalls in evidence submission. Today's webinar will provide an overview of the current framework and future direction. As a regulatory agency, the TGA operates under a legislative framework. The Therapeutic Goods Act 1989 sets out the legal requirements for import, export, manufacture and supply of therapeutic goods in Australia. The Act outlines what products are required to be listed or registered on the ARTG and the obligations on manufacturers and sponsors. Its aim is to make sure the medicines, medical devices and other products do what they are intended to do and are safe for the public to use. Chapter 3, Part 3 of the Act outlines the requirements for domestic manufacturing and sites, including the requirement to hold a license issued by the TGA, unless the product or manufacturer are exempt. For sites located overseas, we do not have the jurisdiction to license them. Instead, we operate a GMP clearance program to ensure that overseas manufacturers meet the same requirements as Australian manufacturers. As there is no specific legislative basis for this, the GMP clearance process operates slightly differently. The activities we undertake are designed to demonstrate that sponsors are meeting their obligations under paragraph 25, 26 and 26, A, as outlined on this slide. A GMP clearance is a tool used to confirm that these requirements have been assessed and the manufacturers nominated are suitable for being recorded against a product registration policy. The Manufacturing Quality Branch assesses compliance of medicine manufacturers, including prescription medicines, over-the-counter medicines, complementary medicine, and blood, tissue, and cellular therapy. We monitor and investigate non-compliant manufacturers and coordinate and manage product recall. The Manufacturing Quality Branch is made up of the following five sections. GMP Clearance, who undertake desktop assessments for clearance applications, GMP Clearance Ownership Transfers, Extensions, Amendments to Names and Addresses. The Inspectorate, who undertake inspections of Australian sites and oversees manufacturing sites in particular circumstances. Licensing and Certification, who assist with licensing of Australian manufacturing sites, inspection scheduling and the GMP compliance program. Recalls, who manage the recall program. And the Manufacturing Quality Branch, Manufacturers Assessment Support Section, who provide system support, coordination, and overseas business improvement. So, why do we need to approve manufacturers? Firstly, it is a legislative requirement unless an exemption applies for Australian sites. Secondly, it demonstrates that the site has undergone an assessment to confirm there are processes and procedures in place to ensure that the product meets the required standards for registration or listing purposes. Good manufacturing practice is a set of requirements which make sure that you get what you intend to get. For sites in Australia, we issue a site which has demonstrated compliance with GMP with a license. Licenses are issued in perpetuity as we have the ability to inspect the sites at any time. As we don't have the jurisdiction to license overseas sites, we manage this through the GMP clearance process. A GMP clearance is issued to the sponsor, not the site, for a specific time frame. Therefore, a GMP clearance number is required for each site used by that sponsor. A sponsor cannot use a GMP clearance issued to another sponsor for their product registration.
The DMP clearance process was first introduced in the early 2000s in order to reduce the burden on industry. This process now provides an alternate route to having a TGA inspector inspect every overseas site on a 12 to 48 month schedule. GMP clearance is a non statutory mechanism, however, it is a requirement for submitting a registration or listing application. The GMP clearance process has reduced the cost involved in compliance and continues to evolve to keep pace with changes in the global regulatory environment. We work closely with other regulatory authorities to promote harmonisation. There are two pathways to obtain a GMP clearance, the desktop pathway and the on-site inspection pathway. The desktop pathway has two options depending on the location of the manufacturing facility and who has inspected the site. We rely on both regulatory documentation and manufacturer documentation to make a decision regarding the site's compliance. I will explain these options in more detail a bit later. Most manufacturing sites are eligible to use the desktop pathway. However, the on-site inspection pathway may be used where there is a compliance concern, the regulatory framework used is not equivalent, or where concerns are identified during the desktop assessment process. The diagram on your screen provides an overview of the process which we undertake to assess the GMP clearance. Where specific criteria are not met, a TGA inspection may be required. We may also restrict the GMP clearance by including conditions on the clearance or amending the scope of the clearance to ensure that it reflects what has been assessed by the overseas authority. I should also note that we only assess the scope which has been applied for by the sponsor, even where the evidence may support a greater scope. The TGA is one of the few regulators to have adopted a desktop assessment process in lieu of an on-site inspection. The Pharmaceutical Inspection Cooperation Scheme, or PICS, has recently issued a guidance document outlining how this type of process can be implemented. This guidance remains voluntary for PICS members, but reflects the trend to utilise desktop assessment processes where appropriate. We have entered into a number of arrangements with overseas regulators. The type of agreement in place influences what information we require, how we use the information, and in what circumstances. For example, under the Mutual Recognition Agreement, we review certificates issued by the recognised regulatory authority for sites within their own borders. If a site is located outside of their borders, then we require further information to be provided for assessment. We also have memorandums of understanding and cooperation agreements in place with various authorities. We are a member of the Pharmaceutical Inspection Cooperation Scheme. This is a non-binding cooperative arrangement with other recognised authorities. This membership allows us in certain circumstances to assess information using the Compliance Verification Clearance Pathway. We consider the quality of the documentation, where the inspection was undertaken, and when the inspection occurred when determining if we will accept the evidence. The following slide shows a list of the currently recognised participants in an MRA or equivalent with Australia. For desktop assessment, we have two application options. One is the MRA pathway and the other is the Compliance Verification or CV pathway. Under the MRA pathway, we accept compliance as an overseas site with the local GMP requirements based on an assessment of a current GMP certificate, provided that the manufacturer is located within the border of the MRA partner, the GMP standard is equivalent, for example, we don't recognise the cosmetic standards for sunscreen manufacture or food standards for vitamin manufacture. 
The GMP certificate is current. That is, the site has generally been inspected in the last three years or specifies a particular inquiry date later than the application was submitted. And the certificate covers the scope of the application, that is, the product type and steps. We do undertake liaison with overseas regulators to obtain GMP certificates. This is a specific service available where a certificate may not be available to the sponsor. This activity is cost recovered and involves us contacting the overseas authorities to seek a copy of the certificate. For information, the sponsor needs to select this, information, this option as part of their application, where they would like the TGA to obtain the GMP certificate on their behalf. The CV pathway allows sites who are located in a country not covered under an MRA to provide evidence for it. It involves a detailed assessment of specific evidence. The evidence requirements are based on the risks associated with the products being manufactured and include documents from the regulatory authority, such as certificates and inspection reports, documents from the manufacturer, such as site master files, validation master plans, release procedures, as well as documents from the sponsor, like product lists and GNT agreements. The documents aim to bridge gaps between the regulatory frameworks to ensure that the TGA's manufacturing standard requirements are met. As mentioned previously, the types of documents required are based on risk. When determining the types of documents required, we consider the location of the manufacturer, who undertook the inspection, and what type of agreement we have in place with the inspecting authority as well as the risk or complexity of the products and process. A sterile finished product is considered to be of a higher risk and complexity than a non-sterile API. Therefore, the documentation requirements are greater for a sterile product than for a non-sterile API. The document requirements are outlined within the GMP clearance guidance document. A link to this document will be provided later on in the presentation. The evidence requirements are updated when there are changes to the international regulatory environment and as GMP requirements are updated. So, what we do. We review applications made by sponsors to determine whether the site complies with GMP. We assess certificates, inspection reports, site master files, inspection history and other relevant documents to determine whether the site complies with the manufacturing process. We assess whether the evidence supports the application being made, for example, the dosage forms and steps of manufacture selected within the application. We look at the overall systems and processes in place, not at an individual product's chemistry or efficacy. This is assessed as part of the product listing or registration process. What we don't do. We don't provide advice to sponsors about whether a specific product or steps of manufacture require a GMP clearance. We refer these questions to the product regulation area as they are the expert when it comes to the product requirements, application systems and validation rules. They also know more about the products than we do as we assess the manufacturing process, not the specific product and its chemistry. I should note that each sponsor is required to obtain a clearance for an individual site. This may mean that 20 sponsors all hold a clearance for the same site. However, uh, this is required as the TGA systems will not allow a site to be listed against an ARTG entry for a medicinal product if the sponsor does not hold a GMP clearance. Therefore, each sponsor needs to hold a clearance for each site to be listed. In 2017, the GMP clearance section undertook some major changes to the GMP clearance process. This included updating the guidance document, progressing applications from receipt to assessment once all fees have been paid, and changing the process to reduce the number of times a sponsor is contacted regarding the application. This aimed to assist in reducing the significant number of applications sitting in the system waiting on information to be provided. The section also increased communication with industry by providing regular updates through various avenues. 
This has resulted in a reduction in the number of invoices being raised, a reduction in email correspondence with sponsors, and improves the quality of the application. Better quality applications enable us to more efficiently assess the application. Sponsors are now expected to provide all information with the application upfront rather than relying on us to request the document be submitted. We have implemented further changes in 2018 and 2019, including implementing TGA versus industry time which is where we apply stop clocks, the fees have not been paid or acceptable evidence has not been provided. We have also provided further guidance to assist industry in submitting complete applications and move the assessment of sterile CV applications to within the GMP comments section. This allows us to have greater control and visibility of all clearance applications. Timeframes for applications assessment have been published this week. These timeframes aim to provide sponsors who submit complete applications with certainty about when their application will be assessed. This has not been possible before, prior to now due to the significant backlog of applications. As you can see on your screen, um, the following are the timeframes which will apply from the 1st of July 2019. These timeframes are based on the types of applications which need to be assessed and aim to provide industry with clear guidance on when they can expect to receive a decision regarding the application. I should note that the timeframes refer to TDA days and will only apply once all fees and acceptable evidence have been submitted. They will not apply where applicable fees have not been paid up front, where required documents are not submitted, where we need to liaise with an overseas authority for information, or where a site has been placed onto GDP signal. These timeframes will also be dependent on the volume of applications received and available resources. Some of the challenges we face in assessing applications are the number of applications received, incomplete and poor quality applications, and an increase in competing priorities for applications including priority and provisional pathways, which are managed through internal processes, as well as changes to the reporting requirements for medicine shortages. We are continuing to provide further education to industry to try to assist them in making better quality applications, and we'll be conducting several webinars over the next six months as another way of providing education. GMP clearance will continue to remain a key part of our regulatory framework. We will continue to monitor changes to the international environment and assess the impact of these changes. We will also continue to work with industry to improve our efficiency and clarify the process. Key information is contained on the following web page. All right, thank you, Stephen and Rihanna. Um, um, it's been a very good session today. The presentation, we will wrap it up there. The presentation will be made available on the TGA website. So tga.gov.au, and we've just got some up on the screen there. Uh, you will find this one under the newsroom tab, under presentations and events. Um, thank you both for your time, and thank you everyone out there for, for joining in. Thank you.